The curse of Natlan. In the world of Tevat, a new region had been discovered, the land of flames Natlan. Nestled between towering volcanoes, tropical jungles, Natlan was a place of perpetual summer. The inhabitants were as warm and lively as their homeland, known for their grand festivals and fiery spirits. The adventurous guild received word that Natlan was open to visitors, and travelers from every corner of Tevat flocked to experience its vibrant culture and rumored bounties. Among the adventurers was a group of four, Amber, Diluc, Klee and the Traveler. Drawn by the tales of Natlan's endless festivities, they embarked on a journey to the fabled region. As they crossed the border into Natlan, they were greeted by a land that seemed to pulse with its life. The air was thick with the scent of flowers and the distant rumble of volcanoes. Lush fields of wildflowers, stretched as far as the eye could see, interrupted only by a sparkling river and the towering trees. The people of Natlan welcomed the group with open arms, inviting them to join to the Festival of Flames, a celebration of Natlan's rich history and the blessings of the Pyro Archon. The festival was a kaleidoscope of colors with fireworks that lit up the night sky and music that echoed through the valley. The adventurers were captivated, their worries melting away in the warmth of the inhabitants' hospitality. Yet as the day passed, something felt off. Klee, with her natural curiosity, wandered into the jungle surrounding the city. She noticed strange markings carved into the ancient tree symbols that didn't match any language she knew. When she asked the locals about them, they quickly changed the subject, their cheerful expressions flattering for just a moment. Diluc, ever absorbent, noticed that despite the endless celebrations, the people of Natland seemed tired. Dark circles under the eyes forced smiles and a nervous energy that contradicted the supposed joy of the festival. The traveler too began to feel uneasy. At night the volcanic rumbling seemed to grow louder and strange whispers drifted through the trees, though no one else seemed to hear them. One evening the group was invited to the flamekeeper's temple, the oldest and most sacred site in Natlan. The temple, carved into the site of an active volcano, was said to house the flame of eternity, a mystical flower that never extinguished, blessed by the Pyro Archon herself. As the adventurers approached, they felt an oppressive heat coming from within, far more intense than the tropical warmth they had grown outside. Inside the temple, the air was thick with smoke. The walls were adorned with ancient murals, telling the history of Natlan. One mural caught Diluc's eye a scene of a great battle between the Pyro Archon and a monstrous figure in the shadow. Below the mural was an inscription half erased by time. The flame is eternal, but the curse is older. As the group examined the murals, the temple door slammed shut behind them. The flames of the torches lining the walls flickered and grew dim. The once familiar warmth of Natlan became an unbearable searing heat. The whispers they had heard in the jungle now filled the air, growing louder, more frantic. The flamekeeper, who had accompanied them, dropped to their knees, her cheerful facade crumbling into despair. Forgive us, she whispered, tears streaming down her face. The curse, it cannot be escaped, not even by the Archon. The ground beneath them trembled as the murals began to change, the painted flames shifting into a grotesque shaped twisted face, screaming in agony. The flame of eternity in the center of the temple flickered violently, casting monstrous shadows across the room. Suddenly, the shadows figured from the murals seemed to peel away from the wall, its form growing more solid with each passing second. It was a creature of nightmares, its body a mass of writhing darkness, its eyes burning embers like fire. The temperature in the temple skyrocketed, the heat now suffocating, burning their lungs with each breath. The, the flame keeper lied. lied, the creature hissed. Its voice sounded like a million screams. The Pyro Archon did not bless this land, she cursed it. The adventurers drew their weapon, but the creature was too powerful. It moved with the speed of a flame, slashing at them with tendrils of burning shadows. The traveler fought back with all their might, but for every blow they landed, the creature only seemed to grow stronger. As the battle raged, Klee, ever the explosive expert, threw a bomb at the creature. The explosions rocketed the temple, 
but instead of harming the creature, it shattered the flame of eternity's pedestrial. The sacred flame extinguished instantly, plunging the temple into darkness. For a moment, there was silence. Then, the creature began to laugh, a sound that echoed through the temple like a death knell. You have freed me, fools. The flame was my prison, and you have destroyed it. Now, I shall consume this land, and all within it. The temple walls began to crumble as the creature unleashed its full power. The group was forced to flee, barely escaping as the structure collapsed behind them. Outside, the sky had turned into a sick red, the once lush and vibrant landscape now withering under the creature's curse. The people, now revealed as cursed souls bound to the land, began to dissolve into ashes in their joyful faces written only terror. The once celebratory air was now filled with cries of despair as the curse spread, consuming everything in its path. As the adventurers fled Natlan, the truth weighed heavily on their hearts. The land of flames had not been a paradise, but a prison for an ancient evil, and in their ignorance, they had unleashed it upon the world. As they crossed the border, the traveler glanced back one last time. The land they had left behind was now a smoldering ruin, and the sky above Natlan was filled with the creature's terrible laugh that would haunt them for the rest of their lives.